Hello everyone, welcome back to the fifth installment of modeling a pontoon airplane inside of Maya. Um, in the last lesson we went and built this entire prop unit here, finished off the fuselage and moved in the pontoon so it's kind of positioned somewhat along the side of the body. So, so things are starting to come together for us here. Um, Alright, so obviously we don't have any wings. That is going to be the last thing we're going to be building in here. And that's what we're going to be doing this lesson. So let's go ahead and bring back the reference images. Oops. No, that right now. We can update that stuff later. There we go. All right, so I just got to build in the wings here. So let's start off with building the back wings. We're gonna go from the the side view here. So go to my orthographic views, go to the side view, space bar, and I'm going to create. I'm not gonna try pulling this out of the base mesh. I'm just gonna create a new piece of geometry and fit it in right here. So I'm going to create myself a polygon cylinder. Okay, so I need a cylinder to be on its side for it to work for me, so I will locate it 90 degrees in the X, and I'll translate it over here and move it down. Okay, X ray gonna work? No, not yet. Fine, I can work without X ray. Just go over and the attribute editor and turn on some transparency in my shader. There we go. Alright, so now I'm going to go to my scale mode. I'm going to scale this the best I can to where it somewhat matches. Okay, and this whole bottom section here that's going to be sticking inside the plane, I don't need that. So I'm going to go to face mode. I'm just going to get rid of those guys all together. Hit delete. Get that too. Okay. So now I just need to take these vertexes to kind of match them up with my wing here. I'll just grab these points here, and I'll move it over there, and I'll just go around the entire room doing this. Now, I do want to be paying attention to, since this is kind of a sharp curve here, and I want to maintain its roundness, so I want to be able to spread out this geometry a little bit so that I have some extra vertexes to capture the roundness of it so it doesn't look too pointy. That's okay. And I know some of you are kind of probably noticing that I just grabbed the middle. In orthographic views it's okay, it's just don't do that inside your <clears throat> your three 3D perspective is you can't really predict how you're moving it and that view. Okay. And that one's from there. I'm going to take this one here and push it down on the side. Okay. So that's pretty good. Go to my area view here. Obviously, it's really wide because I didn't change the width of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it more narrow. I can dump the transparency back up. Okay. And it looks like this last set of vertexes need to be pushed in just a little bit further. There we go. Alright, let's put in some new geometry on here so that when we smooth it, it holds that shape. Let's see if uh, our bevel works for us. I think it will. So let's go to Mesh. Edit mesh, and we'll go to 
edge and grab hold. I'm going to do the 70 version this way. Um, yeah, that looks okay. So let's go ahead and hit double. And that looks okay. Let's see if we can drop an extra edge loop though. Nope, I won't let us do that because we've got triangles here. Okay, so then what we can do, we can just do an extrusion. And we'll just do it like that. So it didn't really change the shape at all, it just gave us some more geometry so that when I hit smooth, it doesn't change the overall shape too much. So I'll just go to mesh and we'll go smooth. There we go. Alright, so that wing looks good. So now we just got these little side wings to deal with here. And we can do pretty much the same thing we just did. Um, I'm going to create myself another cylinder. And my my the way I'm doing this may differ from the book, and that's okay. I mean you don't have to follow the book to the letter, it's just a helpful tool for people who are just learning how to get the job done. Okay, again I only need half of this guy, so I'm just going to delete off the bottom half here. Okay. And let's go to our four panel view. And from our top down perspective, um, this one's going to be a little bit more tricky because I'm going to be doing it to both sides simultaneously. And since it's a little bit skewed based off of uh, the fact that the picture isn't 100% uh, accurate, I'm going to have to kind of um, do a little bit of guesswork and try to keep it as even as possible. As possible. Ah. One just like the ones that are okay. all right. So let's bring this center guy up to where it looks like these guys would round up and connect to it. Just kind of doing a little bit of guesswork there. So on each side here. And these ones I actually want to move out. To where the wing would connect initially. Like this one here. So again, their side. And again, I'm going to translate these ones up. I'm going to scale them apart. So they kind of match where this is kind of coming out from. Good. I'm basically following the line on this one. I'm just ignoring this one because. Yeah. Just because I'm. Uh, Got to pay attention to one, not both, or it won't work. Okay, almost there. Just got these last two to deal with. So that first takes care of that one. Let's go ahead and pop back into our four panel. And I need to turn the transparency back up on that. So let's pop that down. Good. Now I just need to, because I deleted off the bottom half, I actually do have to fill in the bottom part here. And I'm going to use a tool called the Append to Polygon tool. Have it here on my shelf. I'll show you where it's at. Under the mesh tools, and it's the second one from the top. Append to polygon. Now the way this tool works is you select an edge, and then the edges that you can connect to will have these little purple arrows on. So if I want to select over here, create a triangle going across. If I want to get an actual polygon so, uh, quad, so I want to select the one that's across from it. Hit enter, and it completes it. Hit G again. Select the top edge. That's the bottom edge, hit enter, it's that one too. Alright, now this may be a little bit thick, so I'm going to actually narrow this down a little bit. Okay, that's good. Um, we got to deal with the edges now, we're going to do a little bevel on them. Okay. 
edit mesh, edge, that one. And that was good. I'll drop in an extra edge loop. Oh, that's right, I can't do that. I keep forgetting. Uh, we'll do the we did before with the face extrusion. Minus these guys. And as far as, uh, I mean, I know there are some triangles, lots of triangles and some of this stuff, and uh, n-gons, this one here is a, it looks like a five-sider, that one, two, three, no, four, five, six, there's six edges on this one polygon here. Um, n-gons are a no-no, uh, typically you don't want to have anything that's not a quad, uh, meaning that there's four edges on a face brought into any kind of game engine. So typically um, we would steer you away from that, but um, this is more about learning how to model and uh, later on we can learn some more practices on how to model with quads only in mind. So um, right now we're learning about just how to three model and get the job done. Um, we can always learn to refine our methods of final execution in the future. Okay, so this guy here. I'm going to go to smooth it out. So mesh smooth. Uh, I don't like the way that last piece. So I'm going to undo that last one. Because uh, my smooth I made the end part look fun. It's probably just because it's a single face or two single faces. I just need a little bit more geometry here. Let's try it now. That was not there. Okay. Good. All right. So let's go ahead and make sure we're naming our stuff. Let's go to our channel box and I'll call this one mesh rear wing uh, vert. This is the vertical wing. Um, call this one mesh wing uh, horizontal rear. Wing. Okay, I'm not planning on giving this to anyone else to work with, but it's always good practice to make sure your scene's nice and clean. So I just delete the history off those, move them out. Um, that way, if I'm handing this off to somebody else, they're not dealing with something that's not name correctly and uh, trying to figure out how to put or where all your stuff is at so um, it's just good practice okay so the rear wings are done we just got to do the top wing and that one's nice and easy we're just going to create ourselves a cube so we'll create polygon primitive cube all right dropped it right in the center there on the inside of the fuselage um, go to my four panel view and starting from the top here now, this wing, uh, again, we're going to have to dump some of our transparency so we can see. There we go. Um, the wing, I believe, is going to be askew as well. So I'm going to probably end up picking one side and should kind of go on with that. So I'll scale this guy out. That's not too bad, actually. Scale it width wise. Make sure it kind of matches up that way. Good. Now I need some more geometry because if you look, there's some panels on the inside that are extruded inward. Um, I'll go ahead and make sure those happen as well. And then there's these on the edges of the wing, there's these uh, extrusions that give it look like it has like some kind of minor, um, I don't know, edge to it. So. We can work that in as well. So I'm going to go to Edit Mesh. Um, let's pull, we'll turn on Insert Edge Loop. You can find us inside your, your Mesh Tools or Edit Mesh Tools. Um, double click on your Insert Edge Loop over here so you can this, get to the sub menu. And then go to Multi Edge Loops. And I think that 
We'll start with two. So we'll do two here, and we'll scale those ones apart. Z, which where they come right up to the edge here. Actually, let's, let's move them all the way up to the edge so we can capture this the end of the wing. And then we'll drop in some more. So we'll go click on the insert edge of the tool again. And we'll scale those ones apart where they kind of match up with where there's this inset. Click insert edge of the begin. And go to scale. Now this is where like the support wing attaches. So we're going to scale that one. Good. Okay, and now we're going to do some going horizontally because we need some more geometry going this way to be able to extrude into. Uh, there we go. And we're done. So also I've kind of noticed that there's a little bit of a, a lean to us in this. So we're going to actually go to vertex mode, select these vertexes here. Hit E to go rotate. We want to rotate this just a little bit to capture that angle that we got going on here. The same thing on this side. This one's going to just have to be a little bit eyeballed. Hopefully I'm not too far off. That's about right. I'll have to push that one vertex back on each side just so that it uh, still winds up at the front of the plane. The front of the wing. Okay. Good enough. Grab these vertexes over here, pull them back a little bit so they match up with this part of the wing. That's okay. Okay, good so good and happy with that. Go to object mode. Make this guy a little thinner. Now, one thing you're going to want to know is that, so from this view, you can see how the wing, let's say it's seen nice and flat. Um, from this view, it looks like the, because of the perspective, it looks like they're seen underneath the wing a little bit. Um, I'm not sure which one is right. So I'm just going to take my own creative license and put it on there how I like it. And it's just going to be right because I say it's right. And if you're an artist, you can do that. If you're working for someone else, they might tell you that your opinion is wrong. And you don't have to deal with that. And just do whatever they say. But for this project, we'll just do what looks right. Put a nice little bit of slant to it. From the side view, it looks like it's mounted near the front up here. So I'm actually going to go with that look. Seems like that should be right. Okay. And now I'm going to do the extrusions on top here. So we'll run our extrude tool. Just let's those up a little bit. Not a whole bunch, just a little. Do the same thing on the bottom, just give it a little extrusion downward. Okay. Good. Alright, so that wing is really coming together. Let's check the smooth preview and see how we're looking there. That looks pretty decent. Okay. Looks like there's like a little bit of a divot in the middle here. I might have to add in some more geometry in the center to give that little bit of a divot. So I'll jump back into my insert edge loop tool, drop some of those guys in, go to my vertex mode, add these guys, and just push them in a little bit. Okay. Also, I was kind of noticing that. The wing should have like what looks like a little bit of a bow to it. Um, see if I can capture that a little bit. A little, a little bit of a lift. Look like a little more dynamic. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's, we'll just leave that alone. Let's see the ends here need to be a little smoothed out. This is kind of rounded right here, so 
if I need to go to vertex mode, select these vertexes right there. Move the ones right here. Push them back a little bit. So here are the back ones. I need back two, I need back two over here. Round those out a little bit. Oops, looks like I grabbed one down here. Gotta be careful when you're doing point pulling, you don't actually grab the wrong one. Alright, got these ones, and these ones. Oops, nope, don't want those ones yet. Good. And these ones over here. Yeah, I can pull those pins forward, so. That's okay. I'll get here and we'll push those ones in. And so here are these ones. Alright, so now is all that's left to do is just do uh, the simple extrusion of pushing these guys in. Launch mode, preview again. That looks pretty good. Right on the sides. Yep. Okay. We'll go ahead and smooth this out. Mesh smooth. Delete the history. And I'm done with the swing. I just got to name it. So let's go ahead and go to the channel box. We'll call this one mesh main wing. Okay, great. Alright, so there's a couple extra details there on the fuselage here. You can add these in here if you want to. They seem a little unnecessary if you ask me. I'm going to choose to ignore those ones for now. I may add them in later, but I don't really feel like they're necessary. Um, okay, so all that's left to build is the support. And I'm going to use the CB curve tool to do that. And I'll do it from the front view, it looks like. This one right here. Make sure that I am in legacy high quality so I can see the image. There we go. And I'll turn on my CV curve tool. I uh, have it on my shelf here, but again, you can just go to create CV curve tool. There we go. And we'll just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hit enter. And I'm done there. So go back to my perspective view. Now I just need to create a cylinder cap. To make that geometry. So go create polygon primitives, cylinder, delete off all the extra geometry, which is all the bottom stuff. So that is all I'm left with is just this cap up here. And I need to make this cap a little more narrow like that. So smaller. Center pivot on it so it's in the center there. Okay, that looks about right. Good. Alright, so, so all I gotta do is put this guy over here, inside here. Okay. And let's uh, pull the transparency again so I can see inside here. Make sure this guy touches. That's kind of important. There we go. Alright, so all I gotta do now is just shift select the curve and go to uh, Mesh Toolkit, Edit Mesh, Face, Extrude. And there we go. And then I just have to add in the divisions that I want. So go to the channel box and go to the history. Just down here it says divisions 1. I want, let's say, 20. There we go. That looks nice. Okay, go to the attribute editor. Throw that transparency again. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, you can see moved up a little bit, so just move that up to here. 
delete the history, get rid of that curve, we don't need it anymore. If you delete the curve and the history is attached, sometimes it will delete the object that was created by it, so be careful there. Okay. So I'm going to do what's uh, duplicate through grouping. So I'm going to hit Control G. And the only reason why I grouped this object here is because I want the pivot point to be an exact to the world axis. When I duplicate it, it's exactly in the same spot on the other side. So I'll hit Control D, go to the channel box, and I'll put a negative one value in the X. Oops, not the X, uh, Z. There we go. Depends on what axis you're building on. Is X or Z. Okay, so then it's exactly the same spot on this side as it was on the other. So that's good. Okay, so all of our parts are built. I can turn off my reference images. Um, <clears throat> bring back the mesh from my pontoon. And I need to lengthen out these uh, pontoon edges here so they fit into the body. Oops. Go to edge mode and just pull down a little bit. Good. Do the same thing here. Good. Now I just need to duplicate for, let's see here, is this all grouped? Let's check. Nope. Okay, so then I'll select all these objects here. Hit Control G. And near the group over the same way I did before. So hit control D. So now I have my second one. Put a negative one value in Z and it pops the pontoon on J the other side. So now our pontoons are all done and created and our airplane is all done. Um, the modeling phase on this project is over. Um, all I have to do is let's see I have an extra one here maybe. Let's see if I have an extra one. It's it's white so that, that tells me something else. Yeah, there's one part of it. Great, an extra one. Okay, so everything's done here. Is all I gotta do is texture this guy and animate him. So in the next project, I will go through and add some shaders that will give this guy some texture, and uh, we will uh, build a control rig for it so that we can fly it around, and uh, maybe build a little scene for it to fly through. We'll see. Um, but for now, this lesson is completed, so I will see you guys in the next lesson. Thanks for watching.